Hi there, welcome to our channel. I'm Vic. I'm Nick. And we are MV Board Gaming, and today we're looking at Merchants of Infinity. This is a two to five player game and is designed by Andrew Prowse. Nick is going to give a rundown of how you play, and then we're going to give our take. All right, welcome to the table. We are set up for a three player game of Merchants of Infinity. So, in a three player game, we play five rounds, and we each have five meeples. The aim of the game is to get the most platinum. So you are trying to um, make the best deals, fulfill orders and trade, outwit your opponents and be the best merchant of infinity. So first we'll go over what we do in each phase and then we'll do, go in more detail of the phases of the game. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do every round is we're gonna reveal one of these cards. After that, we're gonna determine player order by playing these cog cards out. Then we will do what the bulk of the game is, and that's the trading phase. Um, the trading phase, you're going to be putting workers out on different spots on the board to gain resources or do different abilities or get different contracts, for instance. Then the next phase is going to be the scoring phase. The scoring phase uh, will go in a certain order, so you get to do the auction first. If anyone's on the auction space, we resolve that. And then the bonus stuff. So there's different things that are give you uh, bonuses up here. That might have to be resolved at this point. There are then vortexes that you can resolve having these goods. And if the cards are in your hand, you can play a vortex card and get points for those. After that, we do ship orders. If you have any of these ship orders in your hand and you'd like to resolve them, you will remove workers from the resources to pay for these ship orders and earn platinum listed at the top right. Then we do the design phase. Design phase, um, people who missed out on their you know, different things to like, let's say they didn't do any ship orders and they still have people out here. You will get money based on the market or you can go to the steam lab. So you would actually do the steam lab first if you know you're not gonna do the market action and that will help you roll dice um, to get things that aren't, let's say you got the food resource and it's only one value and you really want more than that. Well, you can leave it up to the luck of a dice, remove it from the food location and put it in the middle here in the Steam Lab, in which case you will roll a dice based on how many meeples you have here, and you will get money based on how many meeples times the roll. Again, I wanted to go more in detail after that. Other than that, if you did not do any of those, you do the market. So whatever you're at, at the market, that good is gonna give you this, this much platinum, which will then clean up, in the cleanup phase, it will rotate. All right, so let's go in more detail of all the phases. All right, so in the cog phase, where we determine turn order, we're going to announce, each player is going to announce how many cards they would like to play in the cog, uh, cog phase. So let's say I decided two cards. Jimmy decides one card. Well, we take turns revealing. So I'm going to go ahead and reveal one of my cards. It's a zero. They are revealing their three. And I didn't care about turn order, so I put another zero. You're going to see all the high cards. Whoever has the highest at the end is going to be given the first player and so forth. There are other bonus ones. You can double the previous, so you could have made a six. I could have zeroed it out um, and then played a three and then one. So there's different things. You can zero out player scores. You can swap. You can do different things. Double the previous card, in which case you have to play these more tactically and make sure you placed a good card previously and then you can double it. So you're just gonna do how many cards you played and that will determine turn order. You'll put your extra meeple over here in turn order so everyone is aware what the current turn order is for that round. Now we'll move on to the trading phase. And before this was done, we had to reveal one of these. So in this instance, the event here just says, this world has no food. So that is a resource. Food is a resource and we are gonna block out food right here. The coffee right there. So. No one can gather this resource here at all based on that being blocked. So trading phase, this, is, this will be the bulk of the game. So what can you do in your trading phase? Well, you can put meeples out. You're gonna do this one at a time in turn order. So let's say we have a three player game here. We get five of these each. And let's say the first player is blue. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. They're the second player. They're the third player. All right, just put these aside because I'm just gonna focus on one player really. Maybe I'll throw these out for examples. So we started with a hand of three. You got to pick either any combination of three versus the vortex and the ship order cards. So let's say I took one ship order and two vortex cards in my hand to give me some direction of what I might wanna do. Looking at the board, I have some good options. 
I don't really care about this, but I do like this because if I can acquire this card in this order, that is awesome because these do not require me to spend the resources. They just require that I have a person on a resource. I don't have to spend them. These require you to spend it. So by the time I do this, I will still have these resources. And if you can see that, these resources here match. And I have one in my hand already too. And it's a vortex, another vortex. So ideally, I would like to acquire this card and two of these resources. So on my turn, maybe I'll do that. I'll just get, you know what? I want that bad. And then it'll go around and people will do different things. Oh, maybe, maybe Vanessa really wanted that. And Jimmy really wanted the books. Now, I, well, I still want that, but I don't want it to give up this card. So I don't want anyone to take that. I am going to show my hand and say, you know what? I want this card. And then this will replenish immediately. So people could, they could really hate if you, they, or if they are not focused on their own thing and they just want to, you know, throw a mess in your plans, they could try to keep going here because more than one worker can be assigned there. You can have three. So it would be up to both players to actually do that. They would have to both do that. But that's not the end all be all. If I needed two that bad, I can go to the auction because I really wanted that. And somebody have to compete with me there. So now they're using a lot of their actions just to compete with my order. So they probably will not do that in my, in my experience. They will focus on their own thing and maybe they'll need one. So hypothetically, maybe they needed two of those and maybe they needed this compass here. And I would then say, yes, I need that bad, but do I go here? Nobody has competed with me yet. So now I think I'll go here and take this card and this will replenish immediately. And now when it comes back around to me and people have went, if that's still available, perfect. And then my next action, I am going to want, oh, I didn't have to use this. So I'm gonna want that shirt. So I have three resources out here, one, two, three that is the max i can never have more than three resources even if i do an auction three resources is the max so other players can do various different things they can take like i showed you here they can come here this is unlimited any amount of people can go there you can have up to three on the space station and you can take one of these or on this side space station and then you have um, bonus actions over here so we can go over those real quick um, we have 10 options over here we can do something for quick um, platinum. Remember, the whole point of the game is to get the most platinum. So you can just go over there and get some quick platinum. You can go over here to fulfill a card and draw a card. Gamble, which isn't what you might think. It actually is gambling with the platinum that you have. You put it in one of your hands, ask your opponent to pick a hand. If they are wrong, you get to double your money because it's in, actually in this hand. So if you had 10 there, because you can do one to 10, you get another 10, so you, get, you make 10 bucks. 10 uh, platinum. Lab roll, I explained briefly with this when you uh, do the design phase. So that's gonna add four to your lab roll. If you know you're gonna keep your resources, maybe you're doing all vortexes where you don't spend your resources, you actually keep them. You can do the lab roll, which will give you a plus four on that roll, which is pretty nice if that is the situation. Here, draw three cards, discard two. Again, you get to pick which three you're gonna do, vortex or ship orders. Vortexes pay two times, that would be a good spot for me because I had one that gave me 10. Well, that would give me another 10 Let's say I didn't have enough workers to do it, but if I did, this would be 20 instead of 10. That's awesome. Market value plus two. So just for you, this market, whatever you're trying to sell at the end, remember, make sure you have the market still, you still have your goods out there. Cause if you're doing ship orders, you will not have those goods. So make sure you're not doing ship orders here. Cause your market value for each good is plus two. It does not impact other players, just you. Next turn, you can set the market. So if you're sure you have Vortex cards that you know you want to do next round, you can set the market for those and sell them at a better rate. You, did, you decide, you get to move it, not just one spot, you can move it wherever you want there. Card co uh, Cog cards, you get four of them. That helps determine turn order. And ship orders, you get a plus five on ship orders. Here you have some take that over here. Um, some of them don't really seem like take that maybe as much and some of them really do. So. You can assign your workers here. I'm not gonna go over that. These are things that, you know, you can you do not have to play with this module. Essentially, it's an extra module to these. They're pretty self-explanatory, market value minus two, okay? 
you can bid to move a trader. Same thing as an auction, we'll go over, you can bid and say, hey, I would need you out of that spot, I'll give you this much money and so forth. And once it's an agreement, you can do that. So forth. All right, so that is the trading action. Next, we will go over the third phase, which is scoring, which is a little involved because there's a few phases to scoring actually. Okay, third phase, scoring, we are going to first resolve the auction. Did anyone go to the auction? If they did, let's say Jimmy and myself were in the auction, we'll go back and forth. Um, I believe I would bid first on the first one there. I'm gonna bid two, let's say. Jimmy's gonna bid three, I'm gonna bid four. Jimmy no longer wants it. I will then pay four and put this on a resource that I needed. That would only be if somebody blocked me out of a resource. If they stacked high enough, three, three traders, then they would have blocked me out. I would have went there to make sure I got the, the, the third resource that I needed. So that's one thing you can do. Another action out here I didn't explain. I'm gonna explain these two really quick from Trader. This one is to look at the top three cards here and pick which one goes to the top next round and which two are to the bottom. This one, you can get an extra worker for the uh, rest of the game, but they have to be deployed at the end of each round. You're gonna keep that extra worker until somebody else goes to this action spot. So sorry about that, extra spot right there. All right, so we are now done with the auction because nobody went to it. Jimmy was over here. Okay, so we're gonna do bonus points. So any player has any extra points they need to declare, they may do so now, mainly Vortex cards. So you're gonna now show that, hey, I actually have these two. Do I have those cards in my hand? They can't just be out here. They have to be in your hand. Well, here is one. Remember, Vortex, I don't have to discard. And here is another. So I'm getting 15 points, 10 plus. So I'm gonna go ahead and take 15 platinum for these Vortex cards. So that is really good. We're gonna go around the table and get um, platinum based on Vortex cards at this point. And I do not have to get rid of them. So they're gonna stay there and they get 15 points. After that, we're gonna resolve sh uh, ship orders. So in my case, I have that good one that I took where I get to spend these resources for 30 more platinum. So right there, I made 45 points by comboing, by being smart with the Vortex and lucky. You know, I had to get the right Vortex cards. I had to come out and I got to combo it with not being lucky, but being skillful and noticing that, or just observant, not skillful, but just observant that, hey, this card works really well with the Vortex cards that I happen to have or be out there. So I comboed it perfect, I got the actions I needed and I maximized what I felt. Um, the only thing I could have did better is if I could have perhaps did that Vortex Pays 2, but I didn't, happen, I didn't happen to have those two cards in my hand. I actually use a worker to acquire those cards. In a two player game, I could have, because I would have had one extra worker. So in a two player game, I could have really hammered home another 10 points on top of that, had 55, I believe, because I could have played a Vortex times two, that would have times two that 10 I played, um, this one, to make that a 20, a 25, and a 55. So I could have really even commented even better in a two-player game if I were to land on all the spots my opponent didn't take them because those are only one worker per spot over there. Now we have the design phase. So if you still had, let's say I had these workers on the board, I didn't actually play that card, that ship order, where I would lose them. Because right now, the way I just showed you, I lose them. I spent them. I did my ship order. I got 30 points for these. Let's say I didn't get those 30 points. Let's say instead I sold it. Well, this resource is worth four each. So this is eight points. This resource would be worth 10. So there's no chance I would um, do the design phase on this because that's the best I can possibly get. It's the best resource on the entire board those clothes are. These, odds-wise, I would rule them again because they're below five and it goes the scale is one to 10. But even more blatant, let's say I had the, um, what's a two here? Let's say I had this. More blatant because that's only worth two. I would definitely do design. So I would get two times, because I have two workers, the roll of this die. So I got a six. So six times two is 12. If I would have kept it there, I would have only had four points of those. Instead, I got 12 points for those, and I got 10 points for those, 22 points. So very good, it helped me a lot to do that. Um, obviously, it was better to do the ship order, because I got 30 points, but 22 points for not doing a ship order, pretty good if I were able to manage that. Okay, and that would be the design part of the scoring. And then the market is if I did not have anything, um, I didn't use this ability at all, I just took the market value. 
So in, in um, oh, what did I name her, Vanessa? In Vanessa's case, she has tools. They're only worth three. She's not a gambler. She'll just take her six platinum. Not optimal odds-wise, but maybe you're just not a gambler. You just want the steady. You counted for six. You needed six. Boom, you got it. Um, normally, you probably would go design for a three-pointer. But there you go. That will happen. Um, we have the number of rounds will be based on the number of players. So in a, and it shows here, in a four-player game, you can play five rounds. And if you're in a five-player game, you're not going to play any more than four rounds. In a two-player game, you're going to play all six rounds. Um, in a three-player game, you can choose between, I believe, five and six. And the rules, just to make sure what they recommend in a three-player game, in our situation, they recommend that you do five rounds. But if you want a long game, you know it's highlighted in pink, you can go ahead and play a long game, do six rounds. It'll take a little longer. It's just a matter of what you want your play length to be. Um, you'll still get the same experience of the game, mostly. If you're wanting to, you would probably announce that at the beginning of the game. Oh, we're going to do a, a five, you know, a five, a standard five round, three player game. There you go. You're going to play that all and you'll get your workers back. You're not going to keep these resources ever and you're going to start another round, another, uh, another event is going to come out and so forth. You'll clear the board and play, keep playing until you've hit the round. All right, and we'll take it back up top, give you some thoughts on Merchants of Infinity. All right, so welcome back up top. That's a little bit of how to play uh, Merchants of Infinity. We wrote down some pros, some things we might change if we were to see it at come live. Hopefully some things we might, you know, tinker with. See if yeah. that uh, see if that works. Um, so Vic, start us out. Give us a give us a pro right away. Well, off the top of my head, I can definitely appreciate how quick the player turns were in this game. It felt we've played it at two players and at four, mm -hmm. and both times it really didn't take long to make it your way around the table before you knew it. You know, because you're really just assigning a worker. Yeah, so. and a lot of that would be how awesome the resource management is, the resource wheel. There's 10 different resources, and you could just put a worker there. You're going to have that resource for the duration of the round. Um, that's just a quick action. You already know because based on the cards you have, the cards you see out there, and you're pretty sure what resources you're going to have. You have good, solid direction of what you want. So your turn is really quick, and it can be right back to the person that was waiting that time, and they're, they're not even ready. They're not even ready because it's so quick. Yeah, and I think with, in that vein, having so many places for your worker to go and the quickness of the turns means that you can change where you want to go or maybe your strategy or plan when others have taken up a spot and now you can't get that third resource. Okay, so you can try to pivot maybe to a different vortex order or a different market uh, order, I think that's called, or, or shipping, sorry, a different shipping yeah. function. Uh, it, it is definitely great that there's a lot of options and actions that you can take in this game. Yeah, really combo um, mm -hmm. The fact that I feel like whoever wins this game is going to have the best combos. You're going to, because you're going to want at least 30 points probably around if you can do it right. Because mm -hmm. you want time the vortex is right. You want cards that trigger without having to spend your workers that are on the resources, along with either spending the resources for your market action, um, your um, sector in the middle, which gives you a multiplier when you roll. Mm -hmm or to do those ship orders, which is probably the most likely scenario. Yeah. Um, you're trying to combo those, maybe if you have a 10 vortex, you can get that double um, up there. Yeah, the I was just thinking that of those actions, those extra places, once you've finished like, assigning your meeples for the uh, resources you're gonna get, is being able to go out there and go, oh, I have a really good uh, vortex order, I'm gonna double this, or I'm gonna add five because I'm doing a really big ship order, or even if it's a little ship order, you just wanna add five to it knowing you're gonna do one. And getting to plan it out that you're gonna do a vector order and then you're gonna get to do a ship order is cool because you get to use those resources uh, more than one way. Yeah, and if you see something that's worth a lot and nobody's taking it, you can just pile up on that. You're gonna get 30 points if you take all three tens. Mm -hmm. That way, you don't even need a ship order. You're gonna say, you know what, I have my guys there. Maybe I'll have a vortex on that. Maybe I'll even see the one that requires three. That's just as good, even better sometimes. Sometimes that's 35. You can make that a 40 pointer even by doing another action. Yeah. A lot of ways to combo in this game. It's really good. The combos are excellent in this game. And grateful for the auction action that you can take uh, when you're boxed out of getting um, an item or a resource. There is a way out. So it did seem like you could pivot. You weren't uh, you know, left with, oh, I can't put a meeple. And you get so many meeples. Uh, how did you think about the look of it? I mean, the look is awesome. Yeah. The, the 
you could not do wooden meeples in this game. It wouldn't look right. It'd be out of place. You have a sci-fi theme. Wooden mm -hmm. meeples? No. They have translucent, big, chunky meeples. Chunky ones. And yeah. it really fits the theme of the game. It fits the look. The art is great. Yeah. The box art. Everything is really good. The card art. Um, the theme, you know, it doesn't come through in the the cards, I would say. It kind of does. But the fact that that's mostly flavor text. What you're reading on that is just flavor text. Some of actually pretty funny if you look the at lasagna, it. The lasagna. Really good lasagna. Tons of lasagna. Uh, yeah. 9,000 tons. Uh, whatever it was. But there's really some that actually has some humor in there if you sit down and read it. Yeah. Um, but it is just flavor text. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, the look is really strong. And yeah, do you have any, let's go with some things now, or unless you have other things. I just want to jump No, I think that that change. really uh, speaks to it. I mean, you mentioned the chunky meeples. I really think that they were fitting with the design and the sci-fi nature of the game. Everything just hits right on the artwork for the box and the cards. I think you're right on that. So I just wanted to read it, read it, read it, re reiterate, reiterate that. <laughs> So, so, yeah, what would you change? Um, probably the first thing I would say is something that's going to change, I'm sure. I'm 100% sure it's going to change, but I have to bring it up because I experienced it. The rule book. The rule yeah. book is missing a lot. It is. And I had to, you know, I had to ask the designer or watch, he could lead me to another video where he explained things that weren't explained in the rule book. Um, some things you couldn't gather from the board and weren't listed in the rule book, like the gambling action. The gambling action, let's just go into that. Um, <laughs> It says gamble one to ten. Well, you have a ten-sided die, and you would think that's probably what they mean. Roll the dice, get the thing. You know, it's it's a gamble. You might get a one. You might get a ten. That's also, how we played it when we first started. When we first started. Then I watched the video, and it actually is. Um, you can gamble. You can put a, a certain amount of platinum in your hand, and again, you're trying to win. Whoever has the most platinum wins. You're putting it in one of your hands. You're asking an opponent to pick a hand. If they're wrong, you double the platinum that you bet. Um, yeah, would not have gathered that without that video, and there are a few of those out there that, you know, the rules are lacking a little bit, and there's not even, I don't think there was a two-player variant even in that, but I think it works perfectly if you do a two-player variant, because there are ten, um, resource spots, there are ten bonus, uh, sp uh, space station spots, and you have a ten-sided dice. So I could play a dummy player. That's what we did. When we played a two-player, we had a dummy player to tighten up the board a little yeah. bit. It worked out perfect. It just it just happened to work out. I don't know if that was something that was just not including the rules, but it just seems like a big coincidence for it not to be a variant. I feel like it is. And it just, to me, that's a coincidence if it's not. Because <laughs> it just works out perfect. You roll the 10, and they're going to take a resource. Roll a 10, they're going to take a resource, and it counts, you know? You just yeah. Count it. And same thing, other way, other way, when they roll a resource, they're going to put it on the bonus spots. And it just ties up the board. Um, with all the uh, AI player, and it worked out really well. Yeah, speaking of tying up the board, my immediate thought right away is those event cards. They come out, but there's no iconography or symbology uh, to indicate what is not going to be available on the resource wheel. So some events will block mm -hmm. the ability uh, for you to get a particular resource that round, but regrettably, the card does not have what they're speaking about. So you need to know what tech is, you need to know what... F uh, the whatever they're saying is no longer in supply and some things are, are clear but yeah. some things are a little bit more ambiguous yes. and I think that you know they have a symbol for each resource so they could just repeat that same symbol uh, up on the event card so that's yeah. something that right away when you're talking about um, clarifications or making things a little easier to understand that would be one thing that springs to mind for sure Definitely, and it would be an easy fix. You can just fix that uh, that icon at the top left. Instead of being the catch-all, I mean, that catch-all on every single card, just have the resource. Like you said, if it's uh, clothing, you put the shirt. I know that one's one of the more obvious ones. Mm -hmm. but um, Further, we have some actions that I think need some tweaking, maybe. Um, gambling being maybe one of them, but there's also one you can just go and get points. It's okay. It's not that interesting, that's all. Yeah. Um, it's fine if you want. There's games that do that. You can just go to a spot and you get the steady, steady eddy. You know, just go and get the, get the victory points. Um, there was some spots that you're never going to get more than five on, but I hear there will be an expansion which will change that. Like the ship orders, you're guaranteed to get five. I'm not sure why I would do that because you're, there's no situation you're ever going to do two, um, but you can get six or seven on the other one, so it's always a better spot, but it's just not that interesting of a spot. And there are different things. I like the drafting spots. There's a lot of good spots in the game. There's just some that I feel like maybe need a little honing in. Mm -hmm. The draw and refill is iffy. The... Um, there was another one that really popped out at me. I mean, you have the cogs, which is interesting. I was going to ask you what you thought about the cogs, because we didn't really talk about it before the video. It's And we played that wrong at first, too, mm -hmm. because we played them all out. But that one is in the rules. We played them all out at, at once, but you're supposed to do it one at a time. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
and I think it's interesting, like yeah. a mini game type thing that goes on. I don't, I don't hate it at all. I don't, you know, I'm indifferent to it. I think it's fine. I don't mind it being in there, mm -hmm. the cogs. So there's action spot for that. Um, like, like Vic said though, there's a lot of actions in this game, and that it, there's a lot of good actions over there. There's just some that I feel like maybe need a little honing in. Yeah, and if you were going to add anything to this game, when it already has a lot in terms of the order, the vortex, the shipping, that kind of stuff, I would say player abilities, um, objective. well, the objectives are already the orders and stuff, but action cards where you could um, say, okay, for this this order that you fill, you, you need one, you can do it with one less, or you, you automatically, one meeple counts as two for that resource, or something for this turn that you could just play to yeah. augment your action, that would be cool, or if you or or and or <laughs> you could you could have player abilities where um, there's asymmetrical things that each player can do. Okay, you know they're going to be able to do vortex orders with uh, always have a vor they draw a vortex order every round, whatever the the ability. special ability is, and mix it up. But I guess that would take some testing as well on on balancing it to make sure that everybody is pretty fair. But I, I think it could add a lot to the game to have some special abilities that some players can do and others do different things. I like the idea of replacing some of those actions, some of those bonus station actions, with some of the actions that are a little more interesting. Like Vic said, like taking an action card. Go here, draw two action cards, pick one. And having some interesting actions there, you know? I would like that idea. I think that would add to the game. But you, instead you have this other side, which is a take that. Totally optional. You can't really ridicule if it's totally optional. If everyone agrees, then do it. To me, some of those aren't even take that. They actually belong on the other side. They're actually cool actions. I would like, oh, well, we're not playing with that side of the board, but that would be pretty cool mm -hmm. over here because it's not really hurting my opponents as much as it's a cool thing for me. So maybe it's out of place. Um, but, yeah. you know, it's it's totally optional. You don't have to play with it, so you can't really ridicule it for that. Mm -hmm. uh, one more thing that I think would be cool for a Kickstarter. Like, if you're Kickstarter, Kickstarter exclusive, exclusive, this should be magnetic. I like the idea of this. That was magnetic. awesome on uh, Merchants Col of the Dark Road had that. Yeah, embedded. Coloma. Coloma had that. Yeah. I think this is perfect for that. You just throw it. It's so gratifying having that. But that's a, just a, like a little thing that I would say add on. That's really cool. Like a cool feature for a Takes Kickstarter. Takes a wheel to the next level. If you're going to have a wheel on a game. It's a, it's a yeah. good add on. It's a good add on. Saying magnetic wheel at this at this level of funding. Like, oh, I would love a magnetic wheel. Those are so cool. We love magnetic wheel. Very cool. <laughs> so yeah, there, and Andrew's probably, if he's watching this, he's probably like saying, you know, I am adding this. I am adding this. Like, but this is just what we have. Like maybe he is addressing every single issue we have, and it's like, and he can easily see that. I can easily see like, yeah, that's what I'm adding expansion, guys, and we just don't know. Mm -hmm. So we're, we have to go with what we work, what we're working with, you know. Mm -hmm. That I'm good. Yeah. So those are our initial thoughts and opinions about the game. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. And Andrew, if you're watching, uh, hang out in the comments. Let us know what you thought about our video. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like, thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more great videos. We'll see you next time. Bye.